So has anyone in here ever used a Play-Doh factory? Right there? That's called extruding. Extruding. Okay? So just kind of keep that concept in mind because that's how, with Autodesk Inventor, we're going to create parts. So Autodesk Inventor, the icon on the desktop looks like a big capital I. And when you open it up, it kind of looks like this. So the first thing we're going to do to get started is just to click on New for a new project. And uh, about eight possibilities come up, different kinds of projects that you can do in Inventor. And um, we're going to pick this one. But before we worry about that, let me just give you a brief overview of what these other things are, just so you know. Uh, this one, uh, this one, and this one are um, projects that involve turning a part that you make in Inventor into a drawing. <clears throat> so we'll be using those later. This right here is a sheet metal part. And the sh sheet metal is how they use, what they use to make um, like heating ducts and stuff. And so it's just a flat piece of sheet metal that they fold and have little seams and all that and then make tunnels and all that. So uh, that's kind of a specialized thing. And we won't be doing sheet metal projects. Uh, this right here uh, and this, these are assemblies. And this is when you have several different parts and you're going to put them together to make a working assembly. And we'll be using that later on in the year. <clears throat> this right here is called a presentation. IPN stands for Inventor Presentation. And this takes an assembly that's put together in Inventor with nuts and bolts and however, you know, it's assembled. And then it explodes it with lines kind of showing where the parts came from. And um, so you've seen exploded views probably in catalogs and instruction manuals or something. And so this is what does that. This will also animate the explosion. So you can kind of see the part, the assembly put together, and then you can kind of see it come apart in an animation if you'd have a reason to do that. And we'll be using that as well. <clears throat> What we're going to use here today is just called standard IPT. I stands for inventor. PT stands for part. So just standard part. So if you need to make a note, that's what you need to hit today. Just double click on that. So up comes a two-dimensional grid. What we're going to do, let's look at, at part number one. If you could make that in a Play-Doh factory, what kind of shape would you put in the front of the machine? What kind of template would you put? Probably like an L shape and to extrude out a, a L. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to draw a two-dimensional L shape. Just kind of rough it, rough it in here. And um, then we're going to, in the second step, extrude that out into kind of that that uh, three-dimensional shape. So um, before we go any further, um, let me point out that these little this grid on here, these squares, mean nothing with respect to size. Don't think that this the squares on here are a quarter inch, the same as what's on a grid paper or something. They they don't mean anything other than just they're straight lines and and perpendicular to each other. Okay. All right. So now that we've drawn that, I'm going to right click and say that I'm done <clears throat> with the line tool that I used. And I'm going to use the dimension tool. Now I'm going to make this the exact size that I need. I'm going to click on this, click again, click again, and I can type a number in there. Uh, if you look at your drawing, that's two squares, which is a half inch. So I can just put 0.5. And it just changed the size of that. Down here, that's also 0.5. And then uh, the height of the whole thing, you want to look at that? I believe it's 1.25, isn't it? And then the length, or the width they call it, um, is uh, 7 squares if you count them. You could put formulas in here. I could put 7 times 0.25. And that also works. Do I need this dimension right here of this line? I do not because I've got this one and I've got this one. Therefore, this one is not needed. I can click on it and pull it over and it's going to be right. 0.75 is right. But when I click there to set it, I'm going to get an error message saying you'll over-constrain the sketch. So 
hit cancel. You don't need that. Same thing here. We don't need this dimension either. Understand why? Because we've got this one and this one, so this can only be what it is. So, these dimensions I just put on here, I, I wish they didn't use that terminology because these aren't truly dimensions. In, in inventor terms, these are actually constraints. We've constrained that line to exactly 0.5 inches. You with me? These dimensions will never show up anywhere on a drawing. I mean, later on, when we make the drawings, that's when we put the dimensions on and make it all nice and neat. And so we've got our two-dimensional sketch. Again, I'm going to right-click and say done with the dimensioning tool. I'm going to right-click again and say I'm finished sketching. Now we just move from a two-dimensional world to a three-dimensional world. Notice my tools have changed. My line tool has gone, all that stuff. I've got three-dimensional tools. So let's click on extrude, just like the Play-Doh factory. And boom, it automatically extrudes. The default settings are pretty good, but we need to change the extrusion to what? Five squares deep, so it's 1.25. Agreed? And OK. So there we go. Now, we're not done because we've got a, got a couple slots we need to cut. We need to make a new sketch. I'm just going to right-click up here somewhere in the space and say New Sketch. I got the little thing that looks like a piece of paper and a pencil. I'm going to click on one of these surfaces to create a new sketch plane. Sketch plane was that grid. So I'm just going to click on this surface right here, and I made a new sketch plane. In order to see it a little more clearly, I'm going to click on this box right here. And I'm going to click on the top so it spins it around so I can see the top here real good. Now I'm going to grab my line tool again. I'm going to click right on this line. See how it kind of snaps? It, when you get close, it just snaps to it and it turns green, yellow, green. So click, click. Also notice, see that little upside down T right there? That is the program looking at what you're doing and assuming that you want this line perpendicular to that line. It's a perpendicular symbol. So it's going to help us constrain these two lines to be perpendicular to each other. So click and again, then we have two lines. That means parallel. So it's helping us constrain this line to be parallel to that one. So just come up here until it clicks. So it, it really does help you draw straight and and accurately. Okay, I'm going to right click and say that I'm done with the drawing tool, with the line tool. And then I'm going to hit the dimension tool and dimension this. We're going to dimension that to 0.75. And this is 0.25. And now we need to get that slot in the right place. It's too far up, isn't it? So I need a dimension here somehow. Now, if I try to like say, OK, I'm going to drag a dimension from right there. When I pull it out, it gets the whole line. So that's not going to work. I'm hit Escape. So I need the distance between that dot and that dot. Now I can pull out a dimension, and that's 0.5. You see how I did that? So that's fully dimensioned now, or fully constrained. So right click and say we're done with the dimensioning tool. Right click again, say we're finished sketching. And this time I'm going to hit this little home button. That gives us kind of an isometric view. And we'll go back to the extrude. Now, this time nothing happened. Remember last time we automatically had extruded something? Well, here it's waiting for us to tell it what we want to extrude. Because now we have more than one option. We have more than one unconsumed sketch. We've got this and we've got this. Either one of those could be extruded. We want that. But this time we don't want to add material or what they call join material. We want to cut it. So there's cut and the distance there 1.25 is plenty because it obviously cuts all the way through. But a, more, a better way to, uh, better practice to use would be to change this to all. We want to cut all the way through no matter what. So later on, if we change the size of this block, we know that that slot will always be cut all the way through, no matter how thick the slot 
no matter how thick this thing is, it'll always cut all the way through. And that's what we want today. Okay, we need to make this one up here, right? Right click, new sketch. I could put the sketch plane here, or I could put it here, couldn't I? I could cut the slide either way. Um, why don't I go ahead and just put it here, and I'll use this little um, navigator to navigate around. Line tool, just like we did before. Boom, boom. Look for those little perpendicular marks. Snap right to the line. Dimension that. And this. And then from this dot to this dot is supposed to be 0.25. Right click, done with the dimension tool. Right click, finish sketch. Let's look at the isometric view right there on the home button. Extrude. Nothing happens because it needs to know what I want to extrude, that or that. Cut. All. OK. So now what you need to do is save this to your network folder. And um, Hopefully in your network folder, you've got a folder that says IED. If you don't, make one. And then you can just start naming these parts in some logical order. You can call this part one, and and we'll do part two today probably, and maybe part three tomorrow. And um, later on when you have big projects, for instance, a train with lots of parts, you probably want to make a folder just for that project. So you can have the wheels and axles and pins and smokestack and body all that stuff into one place. You won't have to go searching all through all your files to find everything. All right.